This video is about a quick prediction method called Xiao Lu Ren. Um, can't really translate it. Xiao is small, Lu is six, Ren is one of the ten heavenly stems. Um, there's also another version that's more complicated. So this is the small version rather than the complicated version. This is a quick prediction method. So it's something that you don't need much information and you can just spontaneously do in a moment. It's not going to go into a huge amount of detail like some other readings like plum flower aging or something has a lot more detail, but this can be done really, really quickly. You do need some calendar information, but you know, just like you and I probably know what what month it is and what day of the month it is and what time it is. Ancient people knew what the day and month was in the Chinese lunar calendar. So you and I are likely going to need to look up the calendar information, but an ancient person would just know it just like you know if today is Wednesday or Friday or whatever. So um, so it would, would be even quicker if you were using the Chinese lunar calendar and familiar with it. Um, sorry, there we go. So um, this method uses the lunar month and the day of the lunar month, and it uses the current double hour, and then we make a prediction. And generally, this is done when something unexpected happens when something spontaneously happens like you get a phone call that you weren't expecting or you have a little fender bender or um you hear neighbors fighting when you don't expect it or just whatever some random thing and you want to say what's going on what does it mean <laughs> what's happening um then you could do this prediction method in addition, in the ancient past, you, you know, often the clothing had very long sleeves and people could kind of keep their hands inside the sleeve and do this calculation on their fingers so the other person couldn't see what calculation they're doing or what answer they came up with. And so this is just kind of a little portable prediction method you could carry with you wherever you go. There are only six possible answers, but each of the six answers will have some subcategories like in relationships or with children or with business or if travelers are expected. So even though there are only like six answers possible, there's like variation within each of these as to what each answer means. Um, <clears throat> generally speaking, you find this Xiaolu Ren in Chinese almanacs. I also searched for it in Chinese online. And so the information I have is in, for the most part, things I translated either from Chinese almanacs or from um, online resources. So nobody taught me this. I translated it and worked it out. Um, and so there are six palaces. They're called palaces in Chinese, gong. And you can see that you're generally using your left hand. And then you can use your thumb to touch each position as you're counting through until you end up in a particular position. And then that will be the answer. And you can see by the names that some sound better than others, like great peace sounds good, but empty and lost sounds bad. So these are the six possibilities. Three of them are actually good and three of them are not good. Although to some degree, it does depend on the particular question at hand. Um, at hand. <laughs> I didn't mean that, but there it is. 
So when something spontaneously happens, you, you shouldn't just sit there and decide, oh, maybe I'll do a reading for no reason. But something happens and you think, what does that mean? Like this phone call, is it good news or bad news? <laughs> um, you can do this kind of prediction. So yeah, use the left hand and you're going to start in the first palace, which is called Da'an, which means great peace. And always you're counting in a clockwise direction. Um, and as you move, you touch your thumb to each palace as you count through. So we're going to count through three times. Once for the month, once for the day, and once for the hour or double hour. So the initial pass is the first time. And we start in position one, which is Da'an, which is at the base of the index finger. And what we need to do is count around for the current lunar month. So you're going to need to either use online resources to find out the lunar month and the day of the lunar month, or um, you can use a 10,000-year calendar. And I have another video which talks about how to do those things. I'll put in the um, description of the this video, I'll put the link to the you know calendar thing if you don't know how to do that. Okay, so the initial pass is starting in position one and counting around until you've counted out the lunar month. Um, this middle time around, the middle pass, is wherever you ended up being, um, then it, you call that position number one. And then you count until the day of the lunar month. Um, I'll show you an example. So if you're not getting this by me talking, I'll show you an example. Um, and so you keep counting clockwise through the six palaces until you get to the day of the lunar month that you're asking about, which should be today because this is, you know, when something happens, then you do this. Here, you know, a um, lunar month could have up to 30 days. So that's a lot of counting around the five times around six positions. So there is a shortcut that you can use for any of these three steps. If the number is larger than six, you can subtract by sixes or divide out six and use the remainder to count rather than um, going around repeatedly again and again and again so if this is the seventh day of the lunar month then you subtract six you have one left over so that you only need to do one movement you don't need to do seven movements the third and final time going around is you start in the place where you ended up and you call that the first Chinese hour of the day. The Chinese have, you know, traditionally had two hour time periods. And the first one is the zi hour, which is 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. standard time. If this is daylight savings time, you should move it back to standard time. Um, fall back, spring forward and fall back. So you fall back from daylight savings time to standard time if you're in daylight savings time and you count around, you know, there's a maximum of 12 double hours, just like there's a maximum of 12 months. You count around um, until you've completed the number of the current time period for that event that triggered it. And that's the final result. That's your final answer. And then you have to look up what it means. So that's it. You count around for three different numbers. And that's then you look at where you end up. And then you check the meaning of that particular palace. So before I give you an example, I want to explain something that's confusing for some people. In English, if I, like, let's say you're playing Monopoly and you're supposed to move three spaces, then you're in a space and you start counting with the next space. So, for example, even if we're supposed to start on space one, oh, let me get my little pen. Okay. 
you know, like let's say this is the first pass, and so you start the first pass in space one. Um, in if you were doing this the English way, then you would start like one move would be space two, the second move would be space three, and the third move would be space four. Okay. The Chinese way that things are counted in all of these calculation systems is that you start in the place you are. You don't start in the next position. So the way we need to do this is, you know, we start in the first position and then, you know, second position is number two and third position is number three. If you were counting on, let's say you had, you know, seven after that, you'd start in space three because that's where you ended up. And space three, so... We like it's let's say it was the third month, third lunar month, and we want to see the seventh day of the third lunar month. We'd call this space three, number one, and then four would be two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, and we end up, you know, in the same place. But the point of this is that um, you don't start in when you're counting for any of these three passes you don't start in the next position you start in the same position where you are okay that's really important or you'll come up with the wrong answer <laughs> so here's an example just after 1 p.m on january 15th of 2021 um which happened to be the third day of the 12th lunar month, I got a phone call totally out of the blue from a well-known person, somebody that I'm a fan of and that I had never met. And so, you know, I was really excited about that and it was unexpected. So let's check and see what came out of this. The first thing you have to do is then transform the Western date into the Chinese information, the lunar calendar. And so you can go to this web page. I talk about that in the other video and, you know, put in the date, even if it's a past date or a future date, you can put in the date and you get something that looks like this white down at the bottom. I'm going back to my laser pointer. Okay. And so it's kind of, I don't love the layout of this site, but um, anyway, it tells you that this is the 12th month and the third day. I wish it said, 12th month, it looks good, but I wish it said third day or day three to be absolutely clear what that number three is. So in any case, this is how I know it's the third day of the 12th lunar month. Or I could look it up in a 10,000 year calendar, or I have a different app on my phone. If you have an app on your phone, then you can do this anywhere. Like when something happens and you're out, um, you have the app on your phone, you can find the lunar calendar date and do it even if you're not home. Otherwise, you could write down the time it happened and when you get home, you could figure it out. Anyway, so we also have to select the time we need the time information and so just after 1 p.m is um you know 1 to 3 p.m in standard time well this was january it was not daylight savings time so 1 to 3 p.m is the way hour or the eighth hour so number eight is what i need here now if it was daylight savings time then i made a separate column for you so that you could either convert it back to standard time or you could just read the daylight savings time um, column um, to get. So like in daylight savings time, if something happened at, um, you know, 9.30 a.m. daylight savings time, that would actually be this 8 to 10 a.m., um, but that's the fifth um, branch. So that's how you would use that the fifth hour <clears throat> so you'd count number five but for me the answer is number eight for this particular case note that the chinese day starts at 11 p.m 11 p.m to 1 a.m so let's say if something happened at 11 15 p.m standard time on you know the 
you know, what you consider to be one day, but 11 p.m. is already the new day in the Chinese calendar. So you have to consider it to be the next day. Okay, so back to our example. Um, we saw that 1 p.m. January 15th, 2021 is the third day of the 12th lunar month. The initial pass, you're always starting in the first position. See, it has number one because it's the first position. And then I added number one because for this initial pass, we always start in the first position. And um, this is the 12th lunar month. So I have to go around 12 times. So position one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we go around again, seven in the first position, eight in the second position, nine, 10, 11. And there we are. The 12th month is in the sixth position. I told you, though, you could subtract six and then just use the remainder. So you could just go one, two, three, four, five, six, and you'd be in the right place, taking that shortcut. And so while we're in this sixth position, which is called empty and lost, but that doesn't matter because that's not our final answer. That's not affecting us. Then we have to do the middle pass, which is for the day of the month. This is the third day of the month. And we ended up in position six, Kong Wang, the um, empty and lost. So we call that position number one. The next one is, you know, Da An is number two. And Liu Lian is number three. So our answer for the second pass is number three. But note that I'm starting in the same place that I left off for the first pass. I'm not starting in the next place. So this Lulian is reluctant parting. It's not an especially good one, but it doesn't matter. The, only the final one matters. So I'm going to move on. And the last one is about the hour or double hour. And we determined that this 1 p.m. Um, was the, um, I'm sorry, yeah, just after 1 p.m. was the eighth double hour. So now we have to start where we left off, the second position, Lulian. We call that one, and we count around eight times. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that leaves us in the um, sushi position. It sounds like sushi, but it's something different. It means like quick happiness. Um, and so that's our answer. And already you can think, oh, that's a good answer. This phone call is, is a good thing, but we can see more details shortly. Um, Again, you could subtract six from eight and end up with two. And so you could just start in the same position you left off and count one more to get to number two and you'd end up in the same place. So when you're comfortable with it, you can start taking shortcuts. Okay, we're going to do that example. I'm gonna show you on my fingers how it's done. This is an example for January 15th, 2021. So we always start in the da'an position, which is placing your left thumb on your base of your left index finger. And that January 15th, 2021 was the 12th lunar month, the third day. So we're going to go around 12 times for the 12th lunar month, starting with da'an, the first position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. And then staying in that position, we have to do it for the third day of the month. So the same position, which is a sixth position, is one, second day, third day. Okay. And this phone call came at just after one o'clock, one to 3 p.m. is the eighth hour, double hour. So now staying in the same position, starting in the same position, we're going to go around eight times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
And so the final place that we land is at the top of the middle finger, and that's the um, third position, sushi, <laughs> um, which means like hastening happiness. So that's a very good answer for this question. In addition, you can do the thing where you subtract the sixes and you'll end up with the same answer. So the 12th lunar month, we subtract six, which means we go around six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're ending up in the same position we did when we went around 12 times. And then the third day of the month, one, two, three, there's nothing to subtract there. But then the eighth hour, we can subtract six and end up with two. And remember, you always start in the same position. So one, two. And there we are again in the third position at sushi. So, um, you know, you can take the shortcut by subtracting sixes from a larger number. Okay, that's how you do it with hand counting, hand mnemonics, hand calculations, finger calculations. Okay, so before I tell you more about my personal prediction, let's see the six palaces and talk about them briefly. Um, this is just the general meaning, but there's a lot more detail for each of these. I will make a like handout that I'll put a link to the handouts in the um in the description of the video, so you can get more detail about what each of these means, but I'm not gonna spend the whole video reading you lists of meanings. So here's the general meaning. The first palace is called Da'an, which is a good thing. It means great peace, if that's your final answer. And of course, great peace sounds good, but what you have to keep in mind about this one is that it's, stable and unmoving. So for example, if you get offered like a huge sudden business deal, get rich quick scheme, this isn't likely going to help you with like some big thing. This is like things are going along nicely and stably and there's not big change, but everything's good. The second one, Liu Lian, reluctant parting. It, maybe that's how you translate this, um, is bad, but it's not catastrophic. It's like stagnation. is like things are not happening when they should. Things are delayed. There's obstruction, but it doesn't mean you won't get the result you want. You can still get the result you want, but it's just not happening now. There's like more work you have to do. You have to work hard to get it. You have to get past some obstructions. Actually, the first time I heard about Xiao Lu Ren was um, from someone named Marta Hansen, who is a an academic at Johns Hopkins University. And um, I was having dinner with her and um, Charlotte Firth, another academic, um, and she was telling me about something that she was working on. She was working on an article about what she calls hand mnemonics, which is using the hand this way to, um, you know, calculate things. This is used a lot in Chinese um, ancient calculation arts. Um, <clears throat> and so... Um, her story was that this was like a very long time ago before people had cell phones. So, you know, everybody had landlines. And if you left your house, you couldn't get a message um, because you didn't have a cell phone. And so she was supposed to pick someone up at the airport. And I forget what happened. Maybe she had a flat tire. So she had a big delay. And this person at the airport, you know, called her home and she wasn't home and you know, was like, what shall I do? What shall I do? But the person knew this Xiao Lu Ren and did a calculation and got reluctant parting, which means delays. Doesn't mean anything horrible has happened. It just means delays. So her friend knew not to have anxiety and just to kind of hang out and wait. And so when Marta picked her up, you know, the friend said, yeah, I knew you were going to be late. And Marta said, what? How did you know that? And um, so that was 
how she got interested in this. So number three, hastening happiness. That's the one I got for this phone call. And so that means something good is going to happen and it's quick, but it's not sustained. So number one is good and sustained, but nothing quick. And three is good, but quick, although it won't necessarily last forever. So it's not bad. Um, it is very good. And I got good news with that phone call, but it didn't change my life. Um, and so, yeah, it's pretty accurate. Uh, the fourth one literally means red mouth, but it has to do with gossip and lawsuits and backstabbing and, um, you know, this kind of heady people causing you problems. And so, yeah, I know somebody like that. Um so that would be like, if I got that for the phone call, it would mean somebody was like bothering me about something, you know, that was ridiculous, something like that. But fortunately, I got number three, hastening happiness. Number five is small auspiciousness. So it's generally good, but, um, you know, you're not going to win the lottery for small auspiciousness. So, yeah, good things can happen and maybe good things can last a while, but it's not like, you know, sudden striking gold or something like that. Um, and so that's a good one. There are three good ones. Number one, number three, and number five, the odd numbers are good ones. Number six is the worst one. Kong Wong is like somebody's going to die or something catastrophic is going to happen. That's really, really bad. So you don't want to end up landing there. So that's the general idea of the six palaces. But there are some special meanings for some of them. So, you know, if you want, go get the handouts for this and there's more detail. Um, okay, so in the example from above, from my phone call, we got number three, palace number three, hastening happiness. And so the inherent meaning of good things happening fast. So great, I can relax when I get this phone call. It's good news. And so some of the things that it will tell you in the more detailed stuff is like if this had to do with making money you could make money but actually there might be some losses at first and then there's a big gain or you make money right away but then if you keep playing you're going to lose so for example if you're gambling in vegas and you get this one after you've had a win you know oh maybe it's time to stop because if i keep betting, then I'm going to lose everything I've gained. So you should get out if this has to do with money after you've made your winnings. But my phone call wasn't about money. So that part is kind of irrelevant. If something changes, though, I will, um, you know, I would remember to get out after I make a gain and not to be greedy and keep trying for more. Finally, one of the things that could be could have been relevant to this phone call is that even though it's mostly good, you can make a mistake in a document. So like if you're signing a contract or, um, you know, something like that, you should read it extra carefully. Um, but no contract came out of this. Just some good news, some really good news, but there was no money gain. There was no contract. So that's kind of irrelevant, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of, you know, what else was possible in your understanding of this. So to summarize, there are three passes. Um, you know, the first one is with the number of the lunar month. The second one is with the day of the lunar month. And the third one and final one is with the two hour time period. You can see where the palaces are on the left hand using your thumb to count around. And then again, here's like the major meaning of the six palaces if you land there in, as at the end. So that's a general idea of this. Hope you play with it. Hope you get some answers. It's kind of fun. 
I wouldn't take this overly seriously. You know, I wouldn't change my life based on this, but it's still fun and, you know, doesn't hurt, mine help. Okay. Okay. That's it. 